Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, and today we're going to talk about how to change the name on your California LLC. It's also the same way to change your name on your California corporation. So let's say you've decided you're going to use a different name for your business. Now, you could just take your California LLC or corporation and do a DBA for that new trade name, but maybe it makes sense in this situation to actually change the name, the legal name of your LLC or corporation because you know, the old name doesn't apply at all. You're going in a completely different direction. Different people are owning the business. Who knows? How do you actually do that? Well, how you do that is by amending your business in the new California biz file system. So let's go into the biz file system and you can look at how you're going to actually make those changes. So the first thing you need to do is actually go to the biz file system, which is biz file online.sos.ca.gov. When you get here, if you've already logged in before, it might actually kick you straight to the login screen. If not, if you never created a login, you're going to need to do that. So you just go into the login, hit the button in the top right corner, and you have the ability to sign up for an account. You put in your email, password, first, last name. That's all you need to get an account. I obviously already have one. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. The next thing you need to do is have access to your corporation or LLC in BizFile. Now, if you've created your LLC or corporation in the last few months, in 2022, that's already in the BizFile system. And if you filed it online yourself in the last few years, it will also already be converted over to the new system. But if you filed on paper way before that, or if you hired an attorney or one of these online filing services to file it for you, you're going to need to get access to your file on BizFile. And how you'll do that is I'll show you the link and how you're going to request access. So the first thing you need to do is find your LLC or your corporation in here. And you're going to do that by hitting the search button and then you're going to search for it. And I'm going to search EPW small business law. Now, I do want to say <laughs> I started recording this video a few minutes ago and had to stop it because when I went in here, I realized someone had actually um, filed a statement of information on my corporation and had changed all the address and contact information and put their own name in. I'm assuming it was a mistake, even though I did send them a strongly worded email. But this is an important thing to be aware of. You're going to need to check this on a regular basis because while you do have to be logged in to file amendments and terminations and stuff like that, Sadly, as of this day, you do not have to be logged into file statements of information, which means somebody else can change the address and all this kind of stuff of your business, which is absolutely terrible and a big security hole they need to plug. But anyway, the first step is to make sure everything's okay with your corporation. So you're going to open it up and look at it, make sure no one has change the stuff fraudulently or mistakenly and to also make sure you are in good standing because you're going to have trouble filing anything if your standing is all mixed up messed up what i mean by good standing is that the franchise tax board isn't upset because you have filed taxes that you filed any statements of information that you need to do which is sos standing etc so yep my corporation looks fine now there's a couple things i want to show you is manage user access. So if you don't have access on the back end to your LLC or corporation, this will look a little bit different. It'll just say that you can file statement information, which it actually shouldn't, but that's a topic for a whole nother day. And it'll have, I think it has a history and it'll have request user access. And that's where you hit a button and then you request user access and whoever has the access will get an email and then they can say yes. And I've gotten that from people. And then if nobody has online access because you created this corporation 10 years ago and haven't filed anything online, which would be weird because you would usually file statements or information online, but that's another story. Anyway, then you need to request access and they'll send a letter or postcard or something with a PIN number to your mailing address, which is hopefully right. If the mailing address isn't right, if it's old, then you're going to need to file a statement of information to fix that, which you may or may not be able to do online and then you have to do that by paper. So it's going to be a bit of a process. But let's assume that you have access. So then what you're going to do is you're going to file an amendment. So there's all kinds of things under here. Unfortunately, they're all called file an amendment, even though some of them have aren't filing an amendment. So it has amendment, conversion, termination, mergers, all kinds of stuff. But you're going to do this thing on, that is currently on the top and hopefully will still be because it starts with the letter A, amendment. 
Now, it's going to be called an amendment California Corporation if you have a corporation, and it'll be called California LLC if you have an LLC. So you click on that, and then you're going to go through multiple screens. And the first screen is this is just telling you it, what you file isn't confidential, et cetera, et cetera. And it has this huge thing that I think the first time you should read, I have gotten this many, many times, so I don't read it anymore. This can only be done if you're changing certain things and if your business has already approved it. Now, I have a corporation, and so it's a little bit more formal that people have to vote on it. And you would, if you're changing the name, you would have some kind of written documentation. For an LLC, it's a little bit more informal, but I think you should still have something in writing that says that a majority of the members, majority of the owners have approved this change. It's always good to have a paper trail just in case something comes up later. Now, if you have multiple owners, you definitely want to have a paper trail just in case they later say that they didn't agree. If it's one owner, it's more of a formality, but I think it's a really good idea. So here, this amendment can only be done under certain circumstances. Here, we're just changing the name. So a lot of the stuff about shares and all that stuff doesn't apply. And it has to be um, signed and dated by two corporate officers. I am the only corporate officer that exists. Okay. You can only amend the corporate names or the number of shares. Submitter is going to be my name. Um, I am the human person submitting this who is typing this in. So it could be an attorney's assistant is typing it in or a paralegal, or it could be that your accountant is typing this in. The idea is there's some human person who's typing in it. So I put my name and my contact information. You can also put your phone number. I don't think they'll ever call you. Then it's going to have what your current name and entity number and everything is. Are you amending the name? Then you would say yes. And then you would, if for this is a corporate one, so you actually have to put the designation of the article being amended. So when you file a corporation, it has these different articles that back in the old days you would actually type up. Nowadays it's still done online, so you don't even really see that, but you have to say which thing you're amending. For the LLC, it's probably not going to say that, but so we're going to say that because the corporate name is always going to be the first thing. We're not do, using a previously reserved name. Um, new name PC, new name PC. Are you amending the shares? No. Filing date. Typically, you're going to put the current date, but you can have it be a future date. For changing um, names, I don't know why you would ever do that, but it's always an option. Then this is your approval statement where you're saying the board of directors have approved and it was approved by either the required number of shareholders um, who own shares or maybe shares haven't been issued. So like, let's say you created a corporation and you have like, you just created the corporation three days ago. You haven't done any of the other stuff yet. And then you realize the name is wrong. Maybe even just has a typo in it, right? That's where you would collect, click no outstanding shares. Shares, we're just going to say 100 because let's say that's true. You actually need to know how many shares it is. And then you're going to review this, make sure everything is right, and then go ahead and sign it. Um, I'm obviously going to be abandoning this. Now, we're going to do standard filing. You can do um, expedited same-day service filing. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that for this, but you could. But it costs a lot, a lot of money. Then you have to send for signatures. So one of the things to be aware of is that for a corporation, you have to have two officers sign. So you're signing it here yourself. Let's say you're one of the officers. And then it's going to go to some other person who's going to be another officer. And then you would put in here whoever the signers are and what their titles are, and then it's going to send it to them, and then they'll get an email link where they can sign it. So let's say, let's look at the LLC and see how things were different. So the LLC is going to be very similar. You have this big, long thing that you need to read the first time you do a filing. You're going to have the submitter. You're going to have the information about your limited liability company, and let's say you're amending the name. Are you doing a previously filed reserve name? No. And now you put new name LLC. Obviously, it will not be new name LLC. You will put the actual new name. Are you changing the management structure? I'm going to put no. But if you did yes here, you can change it to being one manager LLC or more than one manager or all LLC members. The file date is the same kind of idea here. You can have it be today or some future date. You can do other amendments, which I don't know why you need to do in this situation for just changing a name. And then you can have just 
one person sign it. The LLC is a bit simpler than doing a corporation. And this is an example of why if it's possible for you to do an LLC, I recommend doing that because it is going to save you a lot of hassle. I can't have an LLC because my business is a professional corporation and in California as of this date. If you have a if you're a lawyer, you can have a partnership or a sole proprietorship or a professional corporation, you're not allowed to have an LLC. That's not true in other states. There are states where licensed professionals, lawyers, doctors, therapists, etc., can have LLCs in or they have professional LLCs, but they haven't done that in California. But don't forget, you're also going to need to do a bunch of other filings too. So once you get this on file and it gets accepted, it'll take them a few days to, because a human will look at it and make sure it's accepted. Once that's accepted, then you need to change everything else that you've ever filed is pretty much the short answer. So you're going to need to go to your bank and change it. You're going to need to go to your merchant accounts, internet hosting, and all kinds of like other accounts where the name exists. You're going to need your registered agent, your, wherever you get your mail, your mailbox, your business license, your seller's permit, um, your trademark application. Pretty much everywhere you use that name. And you have to go change it in all those places. But you have to start in the biz file first and get it on file with the state of California and for it to update everywhere. To do the EIN, my understanding is that you send a letter to the IRS to update them on the name. I think there's a lot of people who don't bother doing that. They just file their next tax return and it's obvious that the name has been changed and it's implicit. But if you want to make sure that there's not going to be a problem later, then that's what you do. You send a letter to the IRS at the address where you file your tax return. So that's the, la the last time I looked, that's how their current guidance works. Because as of right now in 2022, the IRS doesn't really have online ways to update your account. We'll see if they ever add that. Hopefully they will someday. Again, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. If you have any questions about what we've talked about today, feel free to post them below and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Subscribe for more videos like this and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.